So it's not it's not unique to your notes, lah. I mean that's that's what that's if that's what you're wondering. It's not a unique thing to only your notes or anything like that. It's a it's a thing that you have to learn, like. Yeah. Heat capacity, specific heat capacity. Latent heat, specific latent heat. Okay. What's your question? Yes, okay. Yes. Um I I don't quite un understand the question. Yes. I mean you you said it yourself, right? So when it's a it's a straight part, right? You say you said it yourself. You're asking me whether if when it's a straight part, is it latent heat? Then I say yes. Then then you ask me, is it experiencing latent heat? Then my answer is yes. I I don't. How do I explain it? So in all the papers, they ask you something to do with latent heat, and with the graph, and and they ask you what's happening in this straight line, is it? And then you want to write the answer, it's experiencing latent heat. But is that, no, that's the answer. That's that's answer key. I mean, what does answer key say? You know. <coughs> So you have a specific question. It's experiencing... Okay, I mean... Depends on what the question is. Is a question asking you for in terms of something or they just a blank question? Three marks. No, that, that, that I don't think I will set a paper with three marks and ask you a question where they say, what's it experiencing in this straight line? Because that's a extremely vague question. Ah, okay. Then that's a that's a that's an actual question. Yes. So so basically asking me what's the what's the actual state? Is it what's the physical state? Is that what you're asking, Roshan? Not really. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen water boiling? You've seen water boiling in on, on a stove, right? You have, right? I mean, when you when you I, I want you to imagine, I want you to visualize that water boiling on your stove. Imagine you're in the kitchen right now. Look at a pot of boiling water. Um, what states do you see? Only liquid. You, you can't see the bubbles? The, actually, I won't call it water vapor, they're steam. So, so these, these flat lines here are a change in state. That means, you said that you just told me this is liquid, this one's gas, so what's in the middle? <coughs> Liquid changing to gas, huh? It, is, is, 
Wait, wait, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me try to to settle to Roshni's one first because she seems to be very flustered about the straight lines. So, so we have to, we have to settle this. Confusing. Liquid, gas, liquid, gas, liquid become gas. What's that? What's that confusing about? Yeah, I know, but what's the question? Because 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 you, you, you can't you can't just say like oh what does the straight line here represent and you give me five marks for it. I won't say a question like that. Yeah, because it's a, that's a stupid thing to do. No teacher is stupid enough to go and set the kind of question. Yeah. No, you don't believe me? Have you seen have you seen a question where they say explain the the the, the Explain what does a straight line represent and you see a bracket five marks there. Have you seen that before? Have you ever wondered why they don't ask it like that? That's a specific question. I like that. That's a, that's a legit question. So what's happening to the substance, right? So the substance is changing state from liquid to gas. That's it. Because your question is not your, you, you, you see right the question that you're asking is this doesn't help you to get the answer that you are thinking of. If you're thinking like but wouldn't my answer need to have latent heat, then you need to change the question. So the question will be in terms of energy, what's happening to the liquid in 10 to 15 seconds? In terms of energy. So if you change the question, and the question says in terms of energy, then you have to answer in terms of energy. If the question says in terms of energy, what's happening to the liquid, right? And then you go and answer, ah, it's going from liquid to gas phase. Then do you, do you think they should award you any marks for that? No, right? It's, I mean, even though it makes sense, it is right, but it's not answering the question because what's the question asking for? In terms of energy, right? Okay, so, so for boiling, right? Like boiling, right? So again, imagine in the kitchen, you're looking in a pot, it's boiling, there are bubbles, Right, the the liquid is being converted into gas. You know, there's bubbles. Uh, you know, the bubbles is steam, uh, basically. All right. Um, you switch off the fire. Does it still still boil? It still boils. It still boils. It still sits there on the stove, boiling for like you know five ten minutes later. Is it or what? So does it keep boiling forever if you turn off the fire? No, okay, so which means that which means that in order to boil water, you need to provide heat. Does that make sense? Like, you know, in order to boil water, you need to provide heat. Does it make sense? That means the fire is still on, right? The fire is still on, right? The fire is still on, no? Right? Imagine the sound also. Okay? In case you need to visualize this. Because if I don't help you visualize it, right? Then in your mind you're just thinking these are just lines and graphs only. Like you don't you don't put a real thing to it. Physics ma physical world. Right? Yeah. Right? The real physical world. So like that, fire, right? Okay. So so in order to boil, in order to keep the water boiling, you need to provide heat. But then the temperature is not rising. Why? Why? Why is the temperature not rising? No, but why? Why? In terms of energy, why is it why is it not rising? In terms of energy, I'm providing fire. Then, where, where, where? How come there's no, there's no change in temperature? Yeah, yeah, correct. So that's basically you're supplying the boiling water with latent heat. That's why it's called latent heat. Latent means lag. That means the temperature is not rising during this period of time. But that means that we are still providing heat. We are still the thing, right? But the temperature is not rising at all. Temperature remains constant. That's why it's called latent heat. It's like it's latent. It's as though it's not. It's as though you're not doing anything to the water. Right. Right. As though lah. But it doesn't mean doesn't. There's nothing lah. So so you're providing latent heat. So like latent heat. That's what latent heat means. So latent heat is only for the change in state parts. Then if the question like what what Jaya was saying that if you if you change the question to in terms of molecules, explain what's happening here, right? Then whatever Jaya says is correct, right? 
the heat that's being provided right to the water does it increase the ke of the particles absolutely not because in physics right absolutely not because in physics in physics when we supply heat to boiling water boiling water is 100 degrees celsius steam is 100 degrees celsius the ke doesn't increase because ke is based on temperature now i know in chem i understand in chem when you want to say that the the water changes states from liquid to gas the ke increases right we don't do that in physics right when we are boiling water water at 100 degrees celsius steam at 100 degrees celsius the ke is exactly the same and down here you have a mix of liquid and gas right like liquid water and steam right 100 degrees celsius this thing here will, both them both particles have k then you provide the heat for what what does the heat do what does heat do what so if you're not increasing the k of the particles what are you increasing then you're still providing heat you never switch off the stove huh? okay so the word latent heat all right listen huh? the word latent heat is for the entire liquid it's not for the particles if I'm asking you about, I explain in terms of particles, you get only two things that you can say, Ke and Pe. There's only two energies that you can say, Ke and Pe. So as you are boiling water, at this part here, when it's boiling water, right, the temperature doesn't increase, the Ke doesn't increase, but the potential energy of the particles increase. Increase for what? Jaya, increase for what? Increase, increase to the molecule, increase the Pe of the molecules to do what? To break away from the from each other, to break away from the intermolecular forces. You understand that? Yeah, to break away from intermolecular forces. Okay. Alright. Yeah. So the word Ke and Pe is for particles. But then if let's say you ask me a question, so if I go and collectively sum up all the Pe of all the particles, right? I go and sum up all the energy, right? Of the Pe, uh, not Ke, uh, just the Pe only, right? Is that equals to the latent heat that I supply? Yes. Yeah, that, that, I mean, just to give you context of the vocab that you need to have when you're doing thermal. All right. So, so you need to understand all the sections here. For like, for example, like you know, when the temperature is rising, what was, what was, was, what's happening here in terms of molecules? What's happening to this to, in the slope here? That is. The particles are gaining Ke, right? The substance is gaining what? Heat, right? Heat, not latent heat. Latent heat is this part only, right? This is heat. Then in this part, there's a change in state. This is solid melting into liquid, right? So there's a mix of uh, solid and liquid here, all at the same temperature. Temperature doesn't change. Heat is still being supplied. I'm still, I'm still supplying heat like this, right? But the 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 object, the substance is not gaining temperature because it's using the heat and converting it into potential energy for the particles, right? It's using the heat as latent heat to change state. Okay, can right and basically heat latent heat heat latent heat 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 capacity right then latent heat heat capacity latent heat heat capacity correct. What I'm more concerned with is do you know how to distinguish between latent heat and specific latent heat right? If let's say I tell you right that I have a heater right, let's say the heater is is uh you know 900 watts for example right and the time taken from here to here is 30 seconds right let's say from here to here is 30 seconds like how much energy have i supplied to the entire substance here Twenty-seven, twenty-seven thousand joules i ask you for energy I asked you for energy. I gave you power 900 watts. I gave you 30 seconds. Right? Total energy supply is 27,000 joules. Alright? Okay? So is that considered as a latent heat or is that considered as a specific latent heat? Yeah, this is the total latent heat, right? Latent heat is just a total value. If I want you to find the specific latent heat, then you have to take this heat, right? This amount of energy and divide it by the amount of mass that you have. Because that will be the amount of latent heat per kg. To... To, to boil that, that, that substance at this boiling point, okay? So you also need to know that, that when you're doing any heat calculations, right, you need to separate everything. That means this is Q equals MC delta T, right? This is the heat capacity of the solid, the C, the specific capacity of the solid. 
This is Q equals to ML, MLF, right? This is the latent heat of fusion. Q equals to MLF. Then this Q equals MC delta T again, right? But this C is a specific capacity of the liquid, right? Then this Q equals MLV, MLV being the specific latent heat of vaporization. And then the last one here will be Q equals to MC delta T again, right? But C here is a specific heat capacity of the gas. <clears throat> so there's no such calculation where you can combine from here or to there. There's no such thing. You have to add this part to this part to this part separately. Okay, all right. Okay, um, does that help with the concept? Anything else? So there's rarely a question whereby they give you something that will change everything from, from solid to liquid to gas. More, the, more, of, more often than not, it's just from liquid to gas or from solid to liquid. So I'll give you one example here. I'm going to take some ice. The ice is minus 8 degrees Celsius. right? The water here is uh, 5 kg. Okay, The water here is 5 kg. The, the temperature right now is 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. The ice here is about 20 grams, okay, but it's minus, minus 8 degrees Celsius, okay. And then I will give you some numbers. Specific capacity of ice is 2,100 joules per kg, kelvins. Specific capacity of water, right, is 4,200 joules per kg kelvin. Right, latent heat of fusion is 334,000 joules per kg. Later here, vaporization is 2.25 million joules per kg. Right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 20 grams of minus 8 degrees Celsius ice. I'm going to dump it into the water here. And then the water initially is 25 degrees Celsius. Right? Guess what I'm going to ask you? Yala. So what's the final equilibrium temperature? La? 10? 3 minutes now. Yeah, get this done. 3 minutes. Oh, don't know how to start. Yes. Hello? Yeah, good. Yep. I mean, I'm here to answer you, la, but you know, during the exam tomorrow, you probably won't have some, anyone to tell you that it's a trick. La. You, need to you need to figure that out yourself.
Oh my god. Tu vas en Okay, okay. I, I, I need to do my own calculations here also. Twenty four point six, right? Ah? Okay, yeah, can ah. I think the 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 key thing I wanted to point out was this one here. That part there, uh, twenty five minus TF. Just be very careful not to write twenty uh, TF minus twenty five. Okay. You understand what I'm saying, right? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Just make sure it's not it's not TF minus twenty five. Huh? If you root written TF minus twenty five, the whole question is wrong. <coughs> it has to be twenty five minus TF. <coughs> right. Even though we should understand that change in temperature, right, should always be final minus initial. The problem is if you take twenty five minus if you take TF minus twenty five, then this this term here, this this circle term here becomes a negative term. Then because the negative term, right, then the whole calculations here are all factor already. Right? So it has to be written in such a way that it's 25 minus TF. So every time you write change in temperature, right, you've got to make sure you arrange the equation in, in, properly, right, in such a way that you will get you will get a <coughs> sorry, <coughs> you will get a positive value. Right? So that's why it's 25 minus TF. The other one is TF minus zero. So I just left it as TF. Okay? Right, twenty four point six, huh? Okay lah, then 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 you guys are okay what? Right? Or is there any other specific questions? <clears throat> yeah. Derive or define. Derive or define. What are you talking about? Define. You mean define, right? Not derive, right? No, define means you, you read out the definition.
<laughs> you're, you're being very vague. I don't understand what you're asking. I got a block of iron here. Let's say the specific capacity of iron <coughs> is um, 800 joules per kg degree Celsius. Okay? Right? That's a specific capacity, isn't it? If I tell you that this block of iron is 5 kg, right, then ask you, so what is, what is the specific capacity of this block? Yeah, how much is it? Huh? What? What? Yeah, 4,000 joules per kg. Oh, oh sorry, per, per degree Celsius. Yeah, per degree Celsius. Yeah, right. And then let's say I have another block of iron, right? Another block of iron. Let's say it's a smaller piece of iron. Let's say this one is 2 kg, but it's still iron. So what's the heat capacity of this block? 1,600 joules per degree Celsius. So the specific capacity is the same for both of them because they have the same material, but the heat capacity is different because this object is a 5 kg object. It can, it can store 4,000 joules of energy for every degree. It, it will absorb 4,000 joules of energy for every degree Celsius change. Whereas this one here is a smaller heat capacity, but their specific heat capacity is exactly the same because they're made from the same material. Is that... Yeah, that's right. But sometimes they give you the heat capacity on its own. Right? Like for example, the, the question that I gave you just now. Let's say the question here, right? The one thing that I didn't mention was the container. What if I gave you the capacity of the container? <coughs> right? The capacity of this cup. Right? Heat capacity of this cup is like 500 joules. Right? 500 joules per degree Celsius. Then you have to incorporate this into your, into your calculations. So the cup's initial temperature will also be the same temperature as the water, 25 degrees Celsius. The final temperature will also be the same. So that means that this cup will also lose heat to the ice, but you don't have to care about the mass of the cup. So you just, to find the heat, right, lost by the, 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 the cup here, then you just Q equals to big C delta T. Like that. No need the mass, because it's really part of the, the thing really. It's like small m and small c incorporated into it really. Yeah. <clears throat> mm hmm mm hmm yep yep but then the change in temperature of this 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 container will be also the same right q equals to c 25 minus tf also that means you include it into the into it like that so then you multiply by 500 now so 500 like this okay Okay, good. <clears throat> Anything else? Come. I'm here for you. Bring it. Come on, come on, come on. No shit, no way, no way, no way, no way. What, you're talking about the LOL diagram? <coughs> when did they teach you this? Last year? They taught you this last year? What a waste of time, man. The O is just an object, no? The O is an object, get it? O object, yeah. I don't know, just write down what the object is. Huh? 
It depends, right? So, so the LOL diagram tells you about the before and the after. Okay? The before and after. And there's no scale. Huh? The scale doesn't mean anything at all. Huh? Yeah, I know. It's damn stupid. It's damn dumb. Okay? Um, yeah, the, the scale, like the boxes that you draw, right? Doesn't even mean a thing also. It doesn't, doesn't even... Yeah. It's just like... It's just like, like a figure only, right? You know why? You know why they introduce this? You know why they introduce this? Because they scared students don't understand this. They they scared they like like over the years, right? Work energy power has always been like a, a chapter where students struggle. You know why they struggle? Because they teach work energy power in sec three, and nobody cares about sec three. Yeah, so so everyone is absolute shit at this. That's why that's why they have to introduce like stupid things like this, right? To help students, right? You know, cope with it. Worse, it makes it even even more confusing, right? Yeah, it's them dumb lah, seriously. Let me give you an example, okay? Hammer, okay? Okay, not hammer lah, okay? Let's take an let's take a ball, right? Let's 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 drop it. So so, object ball, okay? Object is a ball, okay? Right. Um, let's start from here, right? So the ob the object is here now, okay? I let go, I let go of this object. Okay, I let go of this object. So at the start, what kind of energy store? Right? When you want to use the LOL diagram, you have to change the words already. You have to use the word energy store. So what, the, what is the initial amount of energy store? Or rather, what kind of energy store does it have at first? Okay, so it's called gravitational potential store. You cannot use the word energy anymore. It has to call it store. It's a dumb one, I tell you. It's highly dumb. Let, okay, that means that you all learn that stupid thing where there you have to learn store and pathway, is it? Then got what mechanical pathway? Don't know what pathway is that, right? Ah, uh, you heard pathway before, right? Yeah, stupid things. Uh, a lot of stupid things. Your teachers are going through a lot of stupid things for you. Why is your teachers doing this kind of stupid things? No, 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 torture. They they want to be smart. <clears throat> they want they want to seem smart, but actually they're making themselves look very stupid. Wait, I'm trying to find the picture to send you. Ah, no, all these kind of a damn extra things. Now, nah, yeah, 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 all the stupid words all come out, y'all. Not that you're stupid; it's the words. Okay. The words that you're, 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 you're saying, the words that I'm hearing from you, those are stupid words. Well, this year my spotting is damn good. But I don't know, I, I cannot spot your questions. Eh. <laughs> Where's the stupid picture? Huh? Wait, sorry, that one is not it, huh? <laughs> there are other things, huh? Other things I wanted to send you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Of course, it's in the same direction, lah. Hey, Jaya, how can the... You ride a bicycle before right? you see both wheels, both wheels turn in the same direction, right? Both clockwise, ah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you're not asking a question now. I'll, I'll die laughing on me. Ah, I just told. Um, okay, so you see the, 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 the thing I just sent you? The, the, the text, all the text ones. Okay, you see, ah? Huh? Okay, so there are energy stores. Kinetic, gravitational potential, chemical potential, elastic potential, store, nuclear store, 
internal store. But there's no such thing as electrical store. Okay? There's no such thing as light energy store. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay, hang on. Uh. So you see the... the, the, the hey, hello. I'm sorry, la, but your teacher wants to do stupid things, so I have to teach you stupid things also, right? <laughs> okay, then, then there's one... Then, then there's one there's one says what what is this? Uh, so you see that one that says internal, right? Internal store. Alright, internal store. So if you don't understand what internal store means, internal store means internal energy. What's the definition of internal energy? Well, you instinct, huh? Okay, good. So K E and P E, right? So what, what internal store actually means, right? Internal store actually means heat and sound. Because heat and sound is basically vibration of molecules, right? Which is the KE of molecules. You understand? So heat and sound, internal store. Mm -hmm. Yellow, correct? Oh? Yeah. Okay, yeah? No, like in the context of this chapter, like, okay, in the context of this chapter, we're not talking about the kinetic particle chapter, right, in the context of this chapter, internal store is just heat and sound. Okay, then you see the pathway, you see the pathway, the 1, 2, 3, 4 pathway, mechanical pathway, electrical pathway, heating pathway, and propagation of waves pathway. Okay, so you can transfer from one store to another store via mechanical, electrical, heating, or propagation. You understand this? Then, then, then I, I'm, I'm... Okay, so if your teacher wants to teach stupid things and teach halfway, right? That means they're halfway stupid, you know? <laughs> right? You know what I'm going to do? Let's go the full way. Let's go full stupid on them, okay? Alright, okay, but I mean, it's just the language only. So I'm just going to spend like 10 minutes on this thing and I won't spend any more time on it. Right, just very fast, maybe five to ten minutes. Okay, a bowl, right? A bowl. So, what kind of store does it have? Right, GP store, lah. Right, as GP store, gravitational potential store. Okay, then you let go of the ball. So, so you will draw some units on this thing. So, you draw some units on this thing. Right, one, two. Okay, one, two, three, four. Like that. So, you got five units. Five units. Right, obviously, if you go higher than, but this five is not even proportional to the actual height. We don't even know. We just know that it's like a representation only. There's no real values on this thing. Right? Okay, then you let go of the ball, right? You let go of the ball. Let's say the ball uh, bounces and eventually comes, uh, like, you know, let's say, let's say they say bounce first, okay? Bounce, and then they want you to draw the graph here immediately after the bounce. Immediately after the bounce. Right? Immediately. So if it's immediately after the bounce, what's the GP store? Zero. No GP, right? No gravitational potential store. What does it have? KE. KE. Right? So so we have to draw kinetic store. Right? Because that's the that's a that's a type of energy store also, right? Right? Kinetic store. Look at the list. Right? Kinetic is the first one. Kinetic store. Okay. Let me draw the units. One, two, three. I give it four units. Eh? Why le? How come four units only? How come this one five? This one four units? Alright. Internal store. Okay? Alright. Yeah, it's internal store. But here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing. So, what if, ah? What if, right? We say that the heat is given to given to the surroundings. Let's say we say the heat and sound is dissipated to surroundings. So the heat and sound is not part of the ball. The ball doesn't gain any heat or sound. Okay, let's say we say that. You understand? Then we just leave it as four units. <laughs> then we draw one arrow and then we show one box and then you say internal store of surroundings. Internal store of surroundings like that. 
eventually, ah, uh, eventually if the ball comes to the final rank, so so it bounce, 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 bounce. then it stop, right? And GP store also gone, KE store also gone, right? Then everything is dissipated as internal store to the surroundings already. But you see, the graph is meant for the object. These two graphs are meant for the object. So if you dissipate to surroundings, right, then the, the box here shouldn't go up onto this graph. Yeah. Damn stupid. Ah, yellow, yellow, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you just, everything GP store, everything all zero, right? GP store, K store also, KE store also gone, right? Kinetic store also gone. Then all five boxes to surroundings. Yeah. Okay, hang on, uh, let's, let's, this is mechanical. So, so then the question is, what's the pathway? The pathway is mechanical. Why is it mechanical? Because earth is acting a force on the ball. The earth pulls the ball. Then when the ball bounces, right, it hits the floor. It's also a force. So this is mechanical pathway. Sorry, what? Sure, 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 sure. I already said already, right? They want to teach you stupid things, then they teach you halfway stupid, right? I give you full stupid. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's do another one. Let's do light bulb. Let's do light bulb. Okay, light bulb, huh? All right, let's do a light bulb. All right, light bulb. Okay, light bulb. Like this. Right, LOL diagram. Shala. I think uh, there's some lame attempt at trying to get students to be interested also. La, because you know, LOL. Ha ha ha. La, 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 la. All sorts of stupid things. <laughs> so you connect a, a, a bulb right, to a battery like this. right? Connect a bulb to the battery. right? Describe the energy pathway. So basically it's chemical potential stored from the battery. Right? Is using an electrical pathway or is being transferred via an electrical pathway to the bulb. Correct? Okay. So, what does the bulb have at first? Okay. Before the, 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 the switch is on, what does it have at first? Nothing, right? Yeah, nothing. Okay, it says nothing, right? Uh, actually, not true. <laughs> because some, okay, so, so I haven't, to be honest, right? Let me tell you this, okay? This LOL diagram, right, is also new to me. I've only figured this out maybe in the last two to three months only because the year trees are learning it now. It's part of their official syllabus. For the last 20, 20 decades, right, 20 years, sorry, 20 decades, 200 years. For the last two decades, right, I didn't have to bother about this at all. I didn't have to, like, resort to, to teaching stupid things like this at all, right? But because I think, you know, with evolution of human beings and all that, evolution of students, right, they become stupider, right? right? Or maybe not the students, are the, 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 the people who set syllabus, they become stupider, right? Then they, 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 they think that, oh, okay, okay, we must do these kind of things to get them interested. LOL, the grabs. Uh -huh. Why don't you just LMAO, la? right? How about that? Okay, so, oh, okay, so they have to think on these things here. So, so sometimes I feel that, sometimes the questions, right, is they will give you some things and then you have to just fill in the blanks. They won't ask you to draw it from scratch. La. That's what I'm thinking. But I cannot confirm yet because I haven't had that much experience in it. But I'm going to just tell you what I've seen and explain to you if you see it. Okay? So for the bulb, right? For this kind of question, we actually will start off with a little bit of internal store. With a little bit of internal store. Okay, so we just call it IS, right? It has internal store, one box. Then, like, huh? Why? It's not, it, the switch is not closed, it's not hot, right? Why is there internal store? Because don't forget, internal store means internal energy. Any object at room temperature, right, has a base amount of internal energy. Internal energy is only truly zero when it is at absolutely zero. At the room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, all objects have internal store. You understand this? Okay. However, then then students will then ask, then how about the previous example? The ball, when you drop it, right? Shouldn't we draw the internal store as well? So I really think it's based on the context of the question. Right? That means if the question doesn't want you to talk about the internal store, you don't have to. But for this particular case, maybe they want you to draw, maybe the instructions for the questions will be like, 
draw the LOL diagram for the bulb with respect to its internal store. Ah, then you have to put in internal store. If they didn't ask you for internal store, then they won't, then, then probably you don't have to at all. But I'll just give you a disclaimer. I haven't had enough experience on the different kinds of questions. I don't even know whether this is an official thing, you know. Right? Because like all the sectaries I'm teaching now, right? They don't they, they learn this, but they don't really get a lot of questions from this as well. There's very few questions. And we haven't had a real O level with these questions also. Yeah, but anyway, I'll just finish this up. Huh? I tell you, I will just spend 10 minutes on you, right? So let me just waste 10 minutes of your life going full, fully stupid on this. All right, I'm sorry. Okay, so now then, then there's, there's, electrical, there's electrical pathway, right? So there's a transfer of energy, right? Uh, via electrical pathway, okay? Electrical pathway, right, right, there you go. Transfer energy, right, via electrical pathway. Then the, so what we need to do is we need to recognize that, that the, let's say we give it five units, right, so five units. So one, two, three, four, right, five units, okay, five units. So what will happen is that the, the bulb will obviously heat up, okay? But in terms of all the other stores, it doesn't gain any other store except internal store. The bulb will just be hot right the bulb will just be hot and it will emit heat itself as well as emit light out of the bulb right so if you transfer five units of energy to the bulb when the in in initial internal store the final internal store probably as just a figure might be just three units only then then it's like eh? then where's where's the other energy right then you need to indicate that three units of energy was dissipated into the surroundings as internal store like that, right then this will be via the uh, waves pathway right so energy is not so for all together we're supposed to have six right one plus five we're supposed to have six units of energy right but then it, the bulb will gain some because it will become hotter but at the same time, it will also lose some, like this diagram is only meant for the bulb. So there will be energy loss to surroundings. So three units of energy is lost to surroundings as internal store heat and uh, heat and heat and light. Lah, huh? but, but heat, lah, basically heat, right? Via the mechanical pathway. Yeah. So that's the... Uh, that, that's, yeah, lah, that's, that's, that's how this, this thing works. Lah. You understand? Okay. Okay, I'm not 100% accurate or so. This is the best I can do at this point in time after studying this for like, you know, maybe two to three months. Um, I haven't had, I haven't seen an actual question yet. I have some practice question from some other uh, obscure like syllabus out there, right? It's some don't know what international school syllabus. And then, I mean, this is the best I can, I can understand from it. Lah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Come. Okay, convert this to a VD graph. Yeah. Right? Convert this to a to a ST graph. Cur. Ah, okay, that's where that's where that's yeah, okay. So this increasing velocity, displacement time, gradient gives you velocity. So if the velocity is increasing, then the gradient must be increasing. That's why it's a curve upwards like this. Yeah. Right. But then the question is, so how do you understand this and this in the first place?
Ah, uh, correct, ah, uh, correct, correct. Yes, you, yes, you're right. Okay, hang on, ah, uh, hang on, ah. Uh. Ah, uh, what? Yeah, 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 sure, 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 sure. But, but you have to be very careful with what you just said, ah. Uh. Okay, you know why? Because we don't deal with equations in physics. So if let's say I give you an ST graph like this, right? And I give you a graph like this, right? Okay. And I ask you, can you reproduce the, the, the velocity time graph, right? Okay, yeah? The answer is, you won't know. You, you, you can't tell. You can tell that the velocity is increasing, right? I, I, can, I, can get, I can tell you that. Yeah, but I can't tell. I can't tell whether the graph will look like this, like that, or like this. There's, there's no way for me to tell. I, I can't tell. Yeah, you can't tell. You can only know that the graph is going upwards only. Unless they give you the values. Unless they give you the equation. But it's not math. <laughs> it's not math. Right? Okay. But there is a certain... There, there, there is one, one particular example that you can. Okay? Let me show you this. Huh? Okay. Let me describe the graph to you. Displacement time graph... Right, it's curve, 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 straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. So what is the velocity time graph like? Correct. Terminal velocity. No, no, no objects will go. <laughs> no, are, are you saying that? Are you saying it go like that, then like that? No, 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 no. Okay, I mean, okay, the for a fact that this one understanding is you, you know, this is this is something to do with air resistance. You understand what I'm saying? There's air resistance. Okay, so if there's air resistance, right, and air resistance increases with speed, right? Your speed won't increase in a straight line one. Because the faster you go, the more air resistance you get, right? So what happens is that the speed will increase at a decreasing rate. Like the more you increase, right, the more air resistance you experience. Therefore, therefore, you know, your amount of velocity increase, right? The rate of increase will decrease. That's so why it goes like this. You understand? It has to be like that. It, it, cannot, it cannot be a straight line, a straight line. This one? This one? No, as in... Huh? You want me to draw the acceleration time graph for the straight line and straight line one? Okay, how about, how, about, how about I ask you this? What's the acceleration time graph for this one? Technically not in syllabus. Technically not in syllabus, okay? Alright, technically not allowed at all. But it will look like this. <laughs> it will look like this. So, actually, don't need one. I've only seen this in JC only. Right? I've only seen this graph in JC. And even then also, this highly, highly unfair. It was ACJC who set this kind of stupid questions. Right? ACJC is also one of those try-hard JCs, uh, you know? Maybe you don't understand what I mean by try-hard JCs. There are certain JCs out there, right, that the teachers or the departments, right, they damn try-hard. Like, they damn extra. They want to prove to the world that they are, like, the best kind one, no? Then they go and set this kind of damn stupid questions. <laughs> really, really, really stupid and unnecessary questions. And JC, at least, I think, not so bad. Really, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 don't worry, lah. You know what's the worst, most try-hard JCs I've, I've noticed so far? Anderson's Rangoon. Anderson's Rangoon JC. The most damn try-hard one. Cause the teachers there will give them damn difficult questions, give them damn a lot of like, like high-level math and all that, then totally mess them up, right? Then they just give up. They just, ah, forget it, lah. You know what? No matter how high I try also, it's gonna be like this shit one. So they, they, they really just give up. It really breaks their spirits or no. It's damn stupid on it. I have had two students 
going to ASRJC, right? First three months after the first few lectures in, in on physics, right? Breakdown cry, you know. Right? You know what happened? Both of them left Singapore, go UK study. <laughs> yeah, just drop la. Why is it? There's there's no requirement for you to have to do A levels, what? It's not it's not a death sentence, what? Yeah, screw it, left, go, no point. <laughs> yeah, right? it's not a death sentence. Yeah, that's the reason why. And every time I see their prelim papers, right, I avoid using their papers because their papers damn try hard. Like they're trying to prove to the world like they're the best. The worst thing is R.I. and Hua Chong already watered down their papers already. Like they are, their standard is becoming more palatable over the years. But ASR is still trying to, I want to prove to the world I'm the best. <sighs> yes and no lah. Hua Chong used to be very hard. Yeah, Hua Chong used to be like the ASR type more, then try out one, then they realize that all the students that come out of the physics department all messed up one, all a bit screwed up one. Then they say, okay, okay, you know what, let's just make them not study so hard. Because the harder they study, right, the more the more weird they become. Then they go out there and do weird things. Peeping Tom la, spy camera la, you know, all the, all the weird ones. <laughs> then those guys really call study too hard. You you see all the news, all the news report. Who are, who are the, all these all these peeping tom culprits? All the freaking university students, right? All the university dorms and all that. <laughs> okay, okay. Um. Uh, yes. How you want? How you want it to be negative? Like that? VT graph? Okay, it means that it's accelerating in the negative direction. That means it's accelerating to the, to the backwards. Right? Uh. Like that? That means it's decelerating. And it goes down. That means it's, ex it's decelerating already, then accelerating. You don't get it? Yellow, correct? Turning off? Yes, turning, turning, turning. Like that. You throw a ball up, right? That's the initial velocity. As it goes all the way up, the velocity decreases. Then at the final at the topmost position, the velocity is zero. Then after that it starts to fall down, then you start to accelerate downwards. But the whole time the gradient is constant. The whole time the gradient is just 9.81 only. Yeah, yeah, this one, AT graph, for this one? You sure you want to ask the question? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> it's a negative gradient. It's a straight line. Correct, 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 yeah, yeah, correct, yeah, 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 go on. <laughs> no, you see, right, you, you just need to remember the definition. What is acceleration? Acceleration is rate of change of velocity. On a velocity time graph, is the gradient. You see, right, I say it, it decelerate and it accelerate, right? Is the gradient constant the whole time? Yeah, so the acceleration is constant the whole time, negative 9.1. Ah, that's a good. That's another good question. Yo, yes, yeah. You can just look at the gradient. Gradient negative, whole thing negative, negatively constant, constantly negative. <sighs> what? what? You, you sure you want to ask about ST graph? <laughs> you sure? Huh? You sure? Huh? I I draw for you the ST graph, okay? ST, ah, uh. can ah? Uh? That's the ST graph. <laughs> 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 
Correct. Yes. You just you just spread it out over time. You just spread it over the time. So it goes up and it goes down like that. Nah, nah, nah. Get. Yeah, lah, correct lah. Yeah, yeah. Then then if let's see, let it drop that little bit more down here like this, right? Then it will just whoop, like that out a bit. <laughs> right? Then then the velocity time graph, the graph will be slightly longer a bit. Huh. You still don't understand why is it a curve? Ah? So displacement time graph, right? Basically, you just need to, to understand the shape of the displacement. So if you throw a ball up and down, right? It goes vertically up, it goes vertically down, right? Okay? Then, then but time will pass on, right? <laughs> like, time will move on, on, right? One second, two second, three seconds. So all you have to do is just stretch out the shape that goes up and goes down, like that. A straight line like that. No way. You know why? Because you're saying that as you throw the ball up, right, the speed is constant, the velocity is constant. Eh? Straight line means velocity is constant, right? Yeah, straight line means velocity is constant. But you throw a ball up where the velocity is constant, the velocity decreases, or right? It gradually decreases until a zero at the top, right? So it cannot be like that. The ST graph can only be straight if the velocity is constant. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Hang on. I give you a side question. What if I ask you to draw a distance time graph instead? Yeah. So displacement time graph looks like this, right? Distance time graph looks like. Like that. You just take the second part of it, you take the second part of it, you flip upwards. Yeah, like twisting a, a paper clip upwards like that. Because distance is not a vector, distance is a scalar, right? And a distance time graph must accumulate. So the distance must be a cumulative graph, it cannot go up and down. Yes. Okay, uh, but read the question carefully, okay? You just take the final distance here, the total distance at the point here, not the area under the curve, huh? Nah, so just take the total distance here. Yes, correct. Area is for velocity time graph. The area is distance. Correct, right? Hey, say you all do math on, right? You all tell me you all do math on, right? Displacement, displacement. is displacement. Yes, okay, it's displacement. Hello? No, I can hear you all, but I hear a lot of cross talk. So, so this area under a velocity time graph is displacement. Can? Okay. okay. Wait, uh, hang on. Uh. So, I throw a ball up and throw, go down, right? If I ask you to draw a speed time graph. Yes. Speed time will be a V-shape like that. Tung, tung, like that. <laughs> okay, uh? Okay, but there's no such thing as a scalar acceleration, so acceleration is still going to be like that. Okay? There is the... Average velocity... Average velocity is zero. 
You know why? Because yeah, overall displacement is zero. If it goes back to the hand, right? If the ball goes back to the hand, then overall displacement is zero. Then yes, it, yeah. Wait now, uh, hang on ah. Uh. I want to draw a, a ball bouncing. Ball bouncing. You know what? The ball bouncing. Hello. Ball bouncing ah. Uh. So can I close this? Wait ah, uh, hang on ah. Uh. I, I draw a ball bouncing ah. Uh. So ball, bounce, bounce, bounce. Like that, okay? Right, like this. Huh? Then I draw the displacement time graph. Okay? Same shape. Toing, toing, toing. <laughs> like that. Same shape. Okay. But the velocity time graph is damn hard. Okay, so firstly, velocity time graph for this one, if you drop the ball, the initial speed is, the initial velocity is zero. You start from zero here. You're not throwing a ball up. You're dropping it. Okay? You drop. So as it falls, right? As it falls, it will gravitational acceleration like this. Hang on. Uh. Let's try to aim the thing. So it will be like that. Okay? All right? This is the point where it hits the ground. Then it bounces, right? Okay, then it bounces. So for a bounce, right, the bounce, the velocity changes very quickly, right? So then you need to change direction all the way down here like this, okay? Almost vertical. Something like this, okay? Almost vertical. Then, right, you can see that the, the height is getting shorter and shorter. Means that the rebound speed uh, will be a bit lesser than before. So if let's say the initial speed is here, then the rebound speed is lesser. La. So, so I'm assuming here and then here is lesser, right? Okay, huh? So so let me label the, 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 the points in case you get a bit confused. This is A, this point A, this is B, B for bounce, right? B here, and this is C. C is immediately after the bounce. Okay, C is here, like this. A is at the start. A, B, C. Okay, so C is going up, uh. C is going up, so then the velocity here will go towards the zero, because at the top part here, D, the speed is zero, the velocity is zero, right, D, uh. okay, velocity is zero, so then you have to draw the line upwards like this, to D, right, this is a point D, okay, sorry, I made a mistake, it's not a line anymore, wait, uh. Okay, you know what? Actually, I don't want to draw the top one first. Okay, let's just draw my one first here. Okay, so this is D, this point D here. Okay, but very importantly, very, very important, these two lines must be parallel to each other. Because that's gravitational acceleration. Yeah, I'm trying to use a ruler. Okay, yes. So these two lines must be must be parallel to each other. But at D, right? D, then you start to fall down. Then as it starts to fall down, the graph will still have to go up because going down is positive in this in this picture. Okay, and it will go not as high as before, right? So I'm call this point E at the bottom here, and then this point E at the bottom here, like this. Okay, All right? I stop at E lah. So D will be somewhere around here. Hang on, sorry. D is here. Okay. And then at point E, Right. At point E, uh, at point E, there will be another steep line down again for the next bounce, for the second bounce. Right. But then when it goes back up, the line will be parallel again. Okay. Don't need. Don't need, but usually they don't care already. 
Yeah. So as long as this this three, one, two, three, these three lines here are all parallel to each other, right? That's the most important because that's gravitation acceleration. Hang on, ah. Huh? But how about the acceleration time graph? Okay, so I show you the acceleration time graph, ah. Huh? Acceleration time graph. No. Okay, it's not ready, ah. Huh? So for acceleration time graph, this part here, okay, going downwards is positive, so I will just put this as as positive nine point one now. All right, positive nine point one, ah. Huh? But you see the bounce. You see the gradient of this line? It's a very, very steep line, right? So usually they just draw dotted lines like that to show you that it goes to a very, very negative value and then it comes back up and it's a very, very short amount of time. So bounce accelerations are very, very high values. Yeah, but the graph will look like this. The acceleration time graph will look like that. Okay? Okay, can Any more? You done all the school papers ready. What's the like the most like 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 conflicting thing that you do in school in your school papers that, that stumps you? Okay. Just, just remember this, these three things I say, okay? Faraday's law must happen first. And Faraday, the letter starts with F, so induce EMF. So Faraday's law only, only talks about induce EMF. Now some schools, right? They just anyhow one. They will just say induce current and Faraday's law. That's damn freaking confusing. Faraday's law is strictly only EMF only. Faraday's law before he died, right, he said that, he said that, you know, induce EMF, he's talking about voltage, he never talked about current, yeah, so Faraday's law, before he died, he said that his law is about the induced voltage, okay, now, if you induce voltage in something, not necessarily will have current, you must have, number two, a closed circuit, then you can get a current. So, Faraday's law tells me that I'll have induced EMF. <laughs> Only with a closed circuit, then I can get current. If I, have a, if I can get a current, then number three, I can talk about Lenz's law. So, Lenz's law will then tell you the direction of the, the current will be in a direction to oppose the change that caused the induced current in the first place. Something like that. Yeah, so these three things are, Faraday's law is induced EMF, then with a closed circuit, then you can get induced current. Only when you have an induced current, then you can start talking about uh, uh, Lenz's law. Otherwise, cannot. Okay. Okay, so you got this this one here. You're asked to find the average velocity over time for this. Uh. Wow. So these are trigger words to me, uh. average velocity. If I'm supposed to find average velocity, I need to find total displacement. If I need to find total displacement, I go and find the entire area first. Um, I'm assuming your, your line ends at 4, right? Okay, okay. Okay. Like there, uh. Okay. So I'm going to find the entire area first. This is for total displacement, right? Total S. Then after that, I take divide by total T, which is four seconds. Then this will give me average velocity. Yeah. Which happens to be the same as average speed. Lah. Yeah. Yeah. Unless your graph goes in the negative. Why? It's, I mean, the, tri the trigger word is average velocity, ma. If you want me to find average velocity, then it's total change over total change, or like overall, la, like everything in, right? You know, 
But what? Okay, hang on. Uh, let me let me let me just let me just give you a, a side question on this. Since I mean you are you are talking about this, right? Let me give you a side one. Uh. Um, raise from zero to five. Uh, in two seconds, keep constant at another two seconds. Still at five. Drop down. Sorry, this is four already. Uh. my math done that. Four. Then this is six, right? Uh, then like that. Then like this. Right, drop down to minus, minus, uh, minus three lah, minus three. Okay, drop down to minus three. Uh, and then uh, minus three, and then straight down at seven. That means that means it it completely stops at seven. So this is a velocity time graph, velocity time graph. Okay, then I ask you ah, uh, what is the average velocity? Ah, uh, average velocity. So average velocity. So to find the average velocity, you need to find the total displacement, right? Okay, total displacement over total time. Huh? So total displacement, however, means that you need to take this area and minus away the other area. Because that will be total displacement, right? Then the total time is 7 seconds. But what if I ask you average speed instead? Oh. Average speed is total distance, right? Total distance over total t. Then that means you add the two areas together. Then there will be the total distance. Then you average speed. So there is a difference between the two, two questions here. What's average speed and what's average velocity? AT graph. No, la, not possible. Not possible. Okay, let me give you an AT graph, okay? I, do you get questions from AT graph? It's a bit unfair though, but I can... Okay, okay, can I, can I close this now? Yeah, I close this now. Huh? And let's give you a, a AT graph, okay? AT graph. Huh? So there is one classic question that has happened before, and it looks like this. I don't know whether you have encountered this before. 5 minus 5, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay? Just very simple numbers, okay? So my object is at rest at first. Right? My object is at rest at first. Okay? At first, uh, at t goes to 0. t goes to 0. So this is 0 here. Okay? Then my question to you is this. At the end of 5 seconds, right, what happens to the object? What, sorry, what, 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 what? Uh, uh, Roshni first. Um, Jaya? Is it in the same position I started? No, at the end of 5 seconds there. Eh? End, end of 5 seconds, at the 5 second mark. At the 5 second mark. Okay, so, so, okay, hang on ah. Uh. Roshni, you cannot say terminal velocity because you can only say terminal velocity when I talk about air resistance or when the question is sort of like trying to suggest that but in this case here we are going to assume that this is just pure kinematics ideal kinematics that means no air resistance okay so okay okay one more time ah what ah no 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 that's wrong ah it doesn't accelerate anymore at five seconds right how many what Okay, 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 okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You're you're very con you're very cons you're very concerned about the end point. I'm gonna just tell you this, okay? Be more concerned about the middle portion. During the five seconds, right? The, during the five seconds, what's happening to the car? The car is accelerating, but the car's acceleration is decreasing. So whatever it is, right? At the end of the five seconds, right? It's actually gaining speed. It's gaining velocity all the time. Right. Okay, how much does it gain at the end of 5 seconds? How much velocity does it gain at the end of 5 seconds? Twenty-five over 2, 12.5. Area under the graph, area under the graph, area. The 5 is not constant acceleration. So the 5 is actually decreasing over time. So the area under the graph gives you the change in speed. Right? So the speed is 12.5 meters per second. Correct? At the end of 5 seconds. Cannot. 
Okay, huh? Yes. Then here's the thing that's going to happen. Immediately after from 5 to 10, immediately at 5 seconds, right, something happens to the, the car. The car's acceleration starts to go negative. No. <laughs> okay, huh? So it's very important to understand for acceleration time graphs, huh? it's very important to understand what has happened before the 5 seconds. So one more time again. At the 5 second mark, what is the speed of the car? What is the velocity of the car? 12.5 going towards the right, right? Immediately at like 5.1 seconds, right? The acceleration becomes negative, right? No, it's not moving backwards. It didn't change direction yet. Not yet. Not yet. You see, right? Guys, if you want to change direction, right? You literally have to reduce the velocity down to zero. Then it can change direction. Eh? You cannot change direction immediately at 12.5 now. You cannot like, like travel, 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 then suddenly go backwards like this. So here's the thing, guys. You acceleration. Okay, listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. Uh, the next sentence. Acceleration time graph, right? It's very important to understand the context before the graph. Like what's happening before the graph. So from the 5 to 10 second mark, right? From the 5 to 10 second mark, it had speed. But then from 5 to 10, it will be reducing its, speed, its velocity. The velocity, the change in velocity is negative. So what happens is, at the end of 10 seconds, it stops. Okay, uh? so, so I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to color this now, like this. So that means that it actually, it actually loses velocity. So at t equals to 10, right, it just happened to stop. And in fact, it's like very far to the right already at this time. That's right, that's right. Yeah. But then at the 10 second mark, it's like very, very far to the right already. That means like, you know, when it was here, right, I, even though I draw the picture here, this, 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 this car is actually on the right side. So it speeds up and then slows down. Right? So t equals to 0, t equals to 5, maximum speed of 12.5, then after that, speed becomes 0 at 10 seconds. Okay? Huh? So now the question is, what happens in the next triangle? Because the area is negative, that means you lose velocity. So if the area here is positive, you gain, gain speed in the, in the positive direction, right? Then in the next, next section, is negative area, right? So then, then you have to say that this is loss in speed. So from the same area, you completely lose all the speed that you gain from the first part. But that's where it's going to be confusing because in the next triangle here, you see this triangle, 10 to 15? That's, that's a gain in speed, even though the area is negative. No, no, acceleration time graph gradient doesn't mean anything at all. Yeah, it's the area, it's the area. So in, in the 10 to 15 second right portion of time, right, this triangle here, the green triangle where my thing, my hands is, right? You must you must see what's happening in the previous section. In the previous section at 10, right? Yeah, yeah. What's the speed? Zero, right? It's zero. So in this in this 10 to 15 seconds, they're actually accelerating to the left. That means it's gonna gain speed towards the left. So at t equals to 15 seconds, ah, uh, t equals 15 seconds, it will gain 12.5 meters per second to the left. Alright. Then what happens in the final section? What? What? <laughs> okay, so 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 whether or not it goes back to the starting position, that's that that's something that we have to deal with later. We we can deal with that later. Don't worry. But very important is for you to understand at fifteen second mark, right? Jaya, what's the speed of the object? What's the speed of the car? Twelve point five to the left, huh? But from fifteen to twenty, I'm going to subject it to positive acceleration. So what's going to happen to the car? No, it will slow down.
right? At t equals to 20 seconds, right? The speed of the car is zero. Yes. That's why you see, right, I, I will always tell you, acceleration time graph, right, it's very important to understand the context of what's happening before. So you see, right, in this 15 to 20 seconds, right, you see, ah, the area is positive. So a lot of students will just immediately assume that, oh, positive area means gain in speed. But in this case, it's not. Why? Because in the 10 to 15 second, right, in the 10 to 15 second portion, it was gaining speed from, it was at zero, then it gained speed to the left, right? It started moving to the left, it gained speed until it's 12.5, right? At this point, at the 15 second mark, I will start to give it positive acceleration. It's moving in the negative direction, but I'm giving it positive, positive acceleration. The gain in velocity, or rather the change in velocity is positive change, which means that it's negative 12.5, you add on 12.5, right? The final speed at the end of 20 second mark is zero. Yeah, can. Take your time. Actually, no, don't take your time. Yes. That's right. And that's just simply because, and that's just simply because of whatever is happening to the car, right? It depends on what's happening before. So even though this is positive area, but because it has negative, negative velocity, you give it positive acceleration, it will slow down. Huh? An object moving to the left given a, a rightwards acceleration will slow down. That's why it's slowing down. Also, it also depends. Yeah. Okay, uh, let, me, let me just mess you up a bit. Uh, hang on. Okay, let me just mess, like, no, just, just. I tell you that I subject another, another toy car exactly the same, exactly the same pattern as just now, except at t equals to zero, right? At t equals zero, it's actually moving to the, to the left at 12.5 12 meet, 12 meters per second. All right. So, so at the start, it was already moving. Then I give it this acceleration time graph. So what happens at 5 second mark? At 5 second mark, the car's velocity is 0. Yes. Correct. So you see, right, the first part, right, the object is going towards the left. So the velocity is negative 12.5. Technically, the, the, I mean, I should put negative 12.5. That's right. Correct. So the acceleration is causing it to, to gain, like, you know, to change speed towards the right. So therefore, at the 5 second mark, it becomes 0. Yala, yala, correct, yala. yes, 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 slowing down, yes. That's right, deceleration, la. deceleration, yeah, deceleration. And opposite, okay, so if the object wasn't moving, then it will accelerate in the same direction as acceleration. But if the object was already moving, and you're going to subject it to an opposite direction, then the object is going to decelerate. Ah. Roshni, okay or not? Roshni. <laughs> kind of, ah. No, 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 the first scenario, the, 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 the before I erased everything, right? Is, is that what you're saying? No, 
No, you're talking about the previous example. Now I'm giving you another example. I'm saying that at t equals to zero, right, the object was moving negative 12.5. Negative 12.5. To the left, to the left. No, it doesn't matter even if I didn't give you the minus sign. No? Let's, say, let's say I didn't give you the minus sign. Right? I tell you that this is a speed, right? Then you need to understand the arrow shows you that the, the car is moving towards the left, right? But then a positive area here is, is taken to be the right. So that means I'm giving it positive acceleration. Stop. Yes, that's right. So at the 5 second mark, is 0. Okay, so uh, from 5 to 10, right? From 5 to 10, okay, from 5 to 10, it will continue moving towards the, the left side and increase to 12.5 again. Then from 10 to 15, it will increase even more towards the left until it's 25. No, no, no. Then from 15 to 20, from the 25, it will lose until it becomes 12.5 again, but it's still traveling towards the left. In, in this scenario, right, at no point does the car change direction at all. It always was moving just to the left. Okay, huh? <laughs> I hope now I hope it comes out tomorrow. <laughs> Since I spent so much effort going through, right? Yala yala. Yala. So no, the thing is that this was an actual A level question. Yeah. This was an actual A-level question. Yeah, so, I mean, since you're NJCIP, that's why I brought it up. Lah. Right? What, another one? Lah. Okay, I gotta go soon. Lah. Okay? Hang on, lah. let me just see what's your other question. Ah, what's this? Ah, total displacement is 4. Ah. Okay. Jaya! Displacement time graph, right? The area has no meaning one. Yeah, yala, the area has no meaning. So if you ask me what's the fine what's the total displacement, right? The total displacement is the final value of displacement. Follow? Ah, yeah. So for displacement time graph, you can only find the speed. So the speed is the gradient, right? This is 2 meters per second. This is 0. This is 2 meters per second. This is 0. Ah, like that. Long. Okay. Ah? Okay. Let me know how it goes. You are still allowed to send me pictures of your questions, whatever you have. I try to answer you by tonight. Okay. All right. So it's just that, just that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I, um, unless it's very, very difficult to explain over WhatsApp, then I'll do a call. But otherwise, I think it should be fine. Yeah. Okay, ah, uh, Ken? Alright, gotta go. Bye.